Hi everyone, my name's Daryl. So a couple of months ago, I did a review on my top plug-in hybrid SUVs, and I promised that I was going to actually test drive my top five. Well, you'll probably notice that this isn't an SUV, <laughs> it's a minivan, and it didn't make my list at all. I had the opportunity to test drive this beautiful uh, plug-in hybrid Chrysler Pacifica, and I really couldn't turn it down. So there really aren't very many vans on the market today. Um, the Chrysler Pacifica, it's the only plug-in hybrid. Um, you do have the Toyota Sienna, which is a hybrid, but not a plug-in hybrid. You have the Honda Odyssey. You have the Kia Carnival, whatever that is. But I've actually been really a huge fan of minivans. My wife and my two dogs, we love to go camping and we actually pull a little trailer and a minivan would actually be perfect for us. So one of the things about minivans is, yeah, they're not really all that cool. And I think that's why a lot of buyers are kind of turned off against them. But um, I actually think the Chrysler Pacifica looks pretty good. And especially if you get the S appearance package. So what that does is it blacks out the wheels, you get blackout emblems, uh, you get kind of black around the trim, and it also on the interior, it does um, kind of black seats, and it just looks really awesome. And I'll show a picture of that. So before I get too far into this review, a special thanks go to Chapman Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram for giving me the opportunity of test driving this really special vehicle. They are located on Boulder Highway and they are Southern Nevada's largest dealers and really great people. So why don't you go check them out? So in preparation for this video, I did watch a number of other YouTube videos and a lot of folks, a lot of reviewers really like the car, but they're like, you know, who's going to pay $51,000 for a minivan? But one of the things that they really don't mention is the fact that the Pacifica Hybrid is still one of the only vehicles that qualifies for the full $7,500 federal tax rebate. So if you get just the base Pacifica Hybrid and you get the $7,500 tax rebate, a lot of Chrysler dealerships are also wheeling and dealing and giving discounts. And so you might be out the door you know, with the price of something like $40,000. So let's talk about something that I really like to talk about, which is the drivetrain and the engine. So this vehicle, this Pacifica hybrid, is powered by something very unique, a V6. Most hybrids out there, or plug-in hybrids out there, are powered by four-cylinder engines, which usually sound like crap. <laughs> um, but this is powered by the Pentastar V6, um, on the Atkinson cycle, which makes that V6 a little more fuel efficient. Total output with the V6 and the two electric motors is 260 horsepower. And that's actually less than just the gas-powered V6, which is at 286. But let me tell you, because of the electric motors and the torque, um, this will go from zero to 60 in 7.6 seconds, but that doesn't tell the whole story. So when you're accelerating on the freeway or if you're just in stop and go traffic, this is gonna feel much faster and much more responsive than its gas powered alternative. So let's get real here. This is a minivan, so we're really not looking for performance. Although, yeah, I would like to have a hot rod minivan, but really what we're looking for is good fuel efficiency. And that's where the Chrysler Pacifica really shines. So. It gets on hybrid mode, 30 miles per gallon, which is, which is pretty darn good. Um, I think the star of the class is the Toyota Sienna, which gets like 35 miles per gallon combined. So it's not too far behind that. Uh, it also gets 32 miles of EV range. On the MPG E score, it gets 82 miles per gallon E, which actually rivals pretty closely the RAV4 Prime. So yeah, those are some pretty darn impressive numbers. And if you're taking a long highway trip or if you're just cruising around using it as a daily driver in town to be able to do almost all those miles just with electricity alone, hard to go wrong. So unfortunately, there are some compromises when you choose the plug-in hybrid. So one of the big ones is the stow and go seating that you get in the second row. Um, that basically lets you store the seats underneath um, the floor here, that goes away. 
So unlike the Toyota Sienna, however, you can actually remove the seats and so you still get that capability, but it's a little cumbersome. So another compromise, and this might be depending on where you live, more important than another location, is the plug-in hybrid Pacifica, it only has front wheel drive. So the gas versions, you can get all wheel drive and in the Toyota Sienna, it comes default with all wheel drive. But on the plug-in hybrid, you only get front wheel drive. And the other compromise that you make is you don't have the ability of towing. Um, Chrysler doesn't recommend towing with the Pacifica hybrid, plug-in hybrid. And maybe it has to do with the batteries. I'm really not quite sure. Um, typically, most plug-in hybrids are compromised a little bit in regards to their towing capability. But basically, for the gas version of the Pacifica, you can tow 3,500 pounds, but with the plug-in hybrid, they don't want you towing at all. So looking at the interior of the Chrysler Pacifica plug-in hybrid, it is just, it is very comfortable. It's very spacious, and so basically we have these kind of captain's chairs. You know, I think they, they work really well. You have this really nice Playmedia display here, relatively large. What's nice about the Chrysler Pacifica is they still have buttons for things. So you still have your nice volume button. Um, you still have your AC controls right here. You know, for those of us that just like physical buttons, um, they do have those. I don't know if I'm a big fan of the shifter kind of on here. Storage right here. You have a whole bunch of USB connections. Um, you have a whole bunch of drink holders. You have your um, wireless charging pad in here, as well as some more USB chargers. You have the controls for the windows over here. So, so the interior just looks really nice. This kind of has a kind of a, a tan interior to go with the black. And I just think it's, you know, just really elegant looking. Um, the seat itself is just extremely comfortable. Um, you do have manual tilt telescoping adjustment on the steering wheel. It's just, a, it's just a very comfortable place to be. You know, I especially like uh, the panoramic moonroof on the minivan because it just makes the, the whole thing um, just very airy and very comfortable to be in. You know, of course you have your regular minivan um, kind of space in the back. The windows are really large. Um, you don't have a whole lot of blind spots, which is really appreciated for such a long vehicle. So they've done a really nice job of doing that. They've got, you know, also windows just in the little corners right here, which, you know, also helps your, your visibility. When I was driving, from the dealership, um, I just had, you know, a lot of uh, sense of security as I was driving this. You know, you have your blind spot monitoring, um, which worked really well. Um, you've got your um, special uh, Harman Kardon speakers, and I tried the sound system, and that was really nice. So also one really nice feature, this kind of storage underneath, where you can put like a large purse and large items underneath there, and they're kind of, kind of hidden away, pass through storage. Um, underneath the center console. And so, yeah, I really like that. Yeah, so one of the great interior features of the Pacifica, it's got the stow and go seating and this mechanism works really easily. So basically you've got your number one. So you pull this to release it and it's released. And then you pull on number two and there you go. And just look at all of that amazing interior space. All right, so let's go ahead and give the Pacifica a test drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up the car um, with the normal push button start. And it starts right up. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put it in performance mode. Oh, wait, there is no performance mode. <laughs> it's a minivan. <laughs> well, so since it's a plug-in hybrid, let's go ahead and put it on EV mode. Ah, yeah, there's no EV mode either. So <laughs> one of the things that makes the uh, Pacifica a little bit different from other um, plug-in hybrids is there's really no drive modes. So there's no EV mode, there's no charge modes. Basically you just start the Pacifica plug-in hybrid up and it just assumes that you're gonna use EV mode till it runs out. And then basically when you run out of battery, it's just gonna switch to hybrid mode. The one thing that you can do with the Pacifica plug-in hybrid is it does have 
an L mode. Basically the L mode where the max regeneration is on. Um, so what you do is you just switch the knob over to drive and then to switch it to the L mode you have to push down and then switch it to the right and then it says max regeneration on. And so that's really the only thing I'm gonna turn on. All right, so the regenerative braking is on, so let me see how that works. Yeah, definitely you can feel that. Yeah, so that certainly has a lot more regeneration than my RAV4 Prime does. So that's gonna capture actually a lot of energy. It's not quite one pedal driving. It's gonna give you a lot more power that goes back into that battery. All right, so we're making a right turn here and I'm just gonna kind of gun it a little bit. And you certainly could hear that engine noise. It wasn't obnoxious. A lot of four cylinder plug-in hybrids, um, it, when that gas engine turns on, it just drives me nuts. Um, being that it's a V6, it certainly sounds a lot better, but this gets up to speed really, really super fast. Yeah, it's just, we're just cruising around right now in just total electric mode. And yeah, it's just really nice. It's got that torquiness power um, of the electric batteries, which is, which is really nice. The driving impressions of this car, very comfortable, takes off nice and briskly. Um, so I really enjoy um, just the, you know, that electric drivetrain, those electric motors, it's, it's great. And with the plug-in hybrid, you get the benefits of the electric motors. So you get that fast acceleration and that torque, um, but you also don't have that, you know, kind of that electric range anxiety that you have to deal with. Yeah, I don't feel like I need to dig into the accelerator at all, um, just because those electric motors um, just handle acceleration in town just so easily. Yeah, so one of the things I will say is um, I picked this car up, you know, a couple hours ago. I've just kind of went from the dealership just to kind of get a feel for it. It was about 17 miles um, to get to my house. Um, and it was, I think it was at 100% when I picked it up. And by the time I got home, it was right at about 50%. And so basically, um, you know, and most of that was freeway driving. And so I did um, 17 miles basically um, on total EV. And I think they say, what, 32 miles of EV range. And so I think I could have actually gotten quite a bit more out of it because once again, I wasn't, I didn't use the L button. Um, I really didn't know about that um, until I just kind of find out, found out about it and I was like, oh, I got to try that. Um, so I'd imagine I'm going to actually um, use quite a bit less energy to get to the dealership, but we'll see. So the one thing I will say about um, the drivetrain and just the driving feel is just very comfortable. So it's got a relatively supple kind of ride and I think it's I think it has 18 inch tires, so it's not super aggressive in regards to having really like low profile tires. So that gives a little bit um, kind of more of a floaty feel, I guess you could say, but it's not, I mean, it's not floaty at all. It's just comfortable. Um, it's quiet. Um, I don't hear much in the way of road noise. You can probably hear me, you know, just perfectly. Um, <laughs> unlike when I was uh, driving the Jeep Wrangler, um, <laughs> but, the other thing is, is it's very composed on the road. And so the driving dynamics, I mean, it's not a sports car in any way, um, but the driving dynamics, because of the fact that it's a plug-in hybrid and because of the fact that it's a minivan as opposed to the SUV that's kind of tall, the minivan's a little bit lower. Um, and also because the, the, the batteries are low, you know, it just puts that weight down low. And so you get, um, much uh, more lower center of gravity and so just a very composed ride very comfortable ride um, through the town uh, just just beautiful driving experience and so I just merged on the freeway I, I turned on the engine on real quick but a guy was trying to pass me on the right hand side and yeah he just had no chance I mean it's, it's it sucks to be blown away by a minivan. That's what the electric motors give you. So an electric drivetrain give you that 
you know, kind of torque right away. And even though, you know, you don't have all that much horsepower, um, you know, this thing can get up and, and move and get out of its way really easily. Let me get it up to 75, see if I can get that gas engine to turn on. But yeah, I'm going 75 miles an hour, 76, 77, 78. Still, no engine turning on, 79, 80. So I've been in this, in this stop and go traffic now on the freeway for, yeah, probably 10, 15 minutes. And what's really amazing about it is I haven't actually hardly used any battery power, power at all. Um, it kind of goes down to 13% sometimes and then it goes back up to 14%. And so basically with the regenerative braking, um, you know, it's, a, it's basically able to power itself. It's really, really amazing stuff. The V6 hybrid is just something, you know, kind of unheard of. And um, just recently, the um, Lexus came out, the V6 hybrid. I don't know if it is also on the Atkinson cycle um, that takes advantage of that. But, um, you know, the V6s, there are a lot of V6s out there that are relatively efficient, especially when you're like towing or just kind of cruising on the freeway. You know, so maybe they're thinking about, you know, for freeway, um, taking advantage of the V6 while in town um, taking advantage of the hybrid and the uh, kind of the electric powertrain um, <laughs> you know maybe uh, Chrysler uh, came up with something here so I got to tell you I really thoroughly enjoyed test driving this Chrysler Pacifica plug-in hybrid the fuel efficiency that you get is amazing and it's pretty darn zippy I really enjoy driving it around town and also on the freeway but I wouldn't call it perfect. If Chrysler is listening, here's the things that I think that you should add to the Chrysler Pacifica plug-in hybrid. Uh, first of all, add all-wheel drive. Most of the plug-in hybrids out there have all-wheel drive. That'll mark, open up the market in other locations that really want that capability. The next thing is bring the stow and go for that second seat back. Um, I really appreciate the fact that we can remove um, those second row seats, but man, I just love the stow and go. It's just so easy and it just opens up that space so much. And I think owners would appreciate that. So third, and this would have been a game changer for us. We would have bought the Pacifica plug-in hybrid if we could have towed with it, but give us the ability to tow. And just one more thing, I promise. <laughs> um, so the Jeep Wrangler 4xE, um, the 2024 version, um, I've always wanted the ability to have that thing have an inverter so that you can power all of your equipment, all of your electrics, electric equipment when you're out camping, whether it be like a little mini fridge or a TV or whatever it is that you have with you. And they added that capability in 2024 with the power box. So with your new generation of Pacifica plug-in hybrid, you've got the battery give us the power so that we can plug in our equipment and my goodness um, what a great vehicle for camping so if you enjoyed this video please like it and also consider subscribing to my channel on the next one i plan to review the volvo xc60 plug-in hybrid and yeah that's something i've been waiting to try for a long time so you're really not going to want to miss that video and i'll talk to you or see you then I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain Some things are not the same as they were a year ago But all will be okay, I move on each and every day The past is where it stays, way back a year ago I've changed for the better this time I thought